little bit longer tonight. How many got some needs tonight you still believe in God for? And, um, you know, I bring greetings all the way from South Africa. And I've been in the States for about a month and a half now. But, amen, it's good to come to a prayer service. And I'll be going home next week. But it's good to be here. Thank you guys for having me. Mark chapter 9, verses 14. You can turn here quickly. Mark chapter 9. And uh, just get your prayer spirit continue to be ready because we're not going to go long today. I'm going to read a few verses, but I'm going to kind of look at the whole story here tonight. But I just want to read a few verses. Mark chapter 9, verses 14. Amen. If you could turn there quickly. My name is Pastor Louie, if those of you that don't know me. But I know I'm family tonight, so I think most of you know who I am. So it's good to be in, with family. Mark chapter 9, verse 14. It says, when he came to his disciples, he saw a great multitude. Someone say multitude. So in other words, there was something big about to happen. There's a lot of people, a lot of needs. And the scribes were questioning with him. And straight away, all the people, when they, when they saw him, were greatly amazed. And they ran to salute him or greet him. And his disciples, and his, actually his scribes asked, what are, what are, Jesus asked, what are you questioning about or what are you arguing about? And one of the multitude answered, said, Master, I brought you my son who has a dumb spirit. And whoever takes him, he tears his mouth, he foams, he gnashes his teeth, he pinneth him away. And I spoke to your disciples to cast him out, cast him out, but they could not. Someone said they could not. And he answered him, oh, you of little faith, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring the boy to me. And they brought him unto him, and he said straight away, the spirit take him, and he fell on the ground, and woaming at the mouth. How long has he been like this since childhood? And often it has cast him into the fire, the water to destroy him. But if you could do anything, have compassion on me and help me. Last verse, Jesus said unto him, if thou can only believe all things. Someone say all things. It's possible for him who believes this morning, tonight, I want to just, just for a few minutes, talk to you about how God can do anything. God can do anything. How many believe God can do anything? Amen. Father, I thank you for your word. I ask you, just move me aside. I thank you for what you're doing already. Help me just to add to it, Lord, today and use my life tonight. I thank you for this church, San Diego. What a beautiful church you've raised up. That we can all look to God. We thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. When you look at this story, you, you, you look at three different situations. You find the situation of the disciples, the Christians, the believers, the, even the leadership of the day. You find also the situation of the father who had a need for his son. In other words, his need wasn't so much for himself, but his need for, was for somebody else. How many know sometimes that even on a prayer night, we're not coming even to pray for ourselves so much, but we're here to pray for somebody else. How many are praying for somebody else tonight? You can look at all those hands. Amen. Because most of the time, you know, our needs are being met. God is just helping us to trust for others now, and we're praying. And then also you find the situation where the boy himself that was needing of deliverance, needing of a breakthrough, needing of something to change in his life because he had been this way a long time. Come on, somebody. He had been struggling with this situation for a long time. And, and here Jesus walks into this situation. Now, mind you, just right before this, he had just come back from the mountaintop. He had just come back with praying with Jesus, with James, even John, and also and uh, Peter on the mountaintop and had came down now. And he finds himself in a situation. How many know sometimes when you come down from a mountaintop, you come into a situation? Come back from a conference, come back from a powerful prayer. You know, we have times that we're, 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 we're moving, God's moving, but then we come into a situation. But how many thank God that when Jesus walked into this situation that he not only just changed one of those situations, but he changed all of them at the same time? Oh, you don't hear me. How many know God is able to meet our needs? See, God's able to meet your need. He's able to meet your need. He's able to meet your need. But here's how powerful God is. He's able to meet your need, your need, and your need at the same time. Oh, that's some. Come on, give the Lord a hand of praise. 
No matter how many needs are represented here tonight, God is able to meet all the needs. And you don't have to wait in line. Amen. You don't got to wait for no breakthrough, that every breakthrough could come at the exact same time on a Wednesday night, amen, at 7, or 8 o'clock now, amen, 8, 10, 8, 15, I don't know how long I'll preach today, but you'll have a time, amen, that I, may, I believe that God's able to meet all of our needs at the same time. That, that's what happened. He walked into this situation and he found himself sitting with a lot of people that had some needs. And I believe this, as Paul said it, in Corinthians, he said, my grace is sufficient for you. Even when the Apostle Paul asked for his pain to be taken away, the Bible says that he didn't take it away. What he did is he gave him grace to be able to have the power to be able to endure that season. Come on now. Or that life that he was going through. In other words, sometimes your breakthrough is right next to your weakness. Sometimes your breakthrough is right next to your humility. Sometimes your breakthrough is right next to a time that you plead with God like this father did and said, I don't know what to do, but all I know is I know who has the answer to my problem and I need to get to Jesus tonight. I need to get the power of the Holy Spirit to fill me up tonight because I'm not walking out of this place the same person, but I came to a Wednesday night prayer service and also a spirit week because I know that God is the one that's going to meet my needs. That's what happened. He's, I believe sometimes it's next to our weakness in our times of pain and our times of even confusion is when we get our biggest breakthroughs. Hello. Someone say the, the bigger the levels, the bigger the devils, right? Well, that only means also the bigger the breakthrough as well. The bigger the victory. The bigger the devil, the bigger also the anointing that comes over your life. The bigger the breakthrough when it happens, come on, when God turns it around, because how many know God's able to turn it around? He said, what are you arguing about when he walked into the situation? He walked into this little bit of a mess. And I don't know what they're arguing about, but they were arguing, the Bible says, maybe they're arguing about the Sabbath or about the laws or about different, you know, biblical things. And how many know sometimes we get involved in stuff that isn't really worth fighting? Hello. How I many know sometimes we, we fight over the things we shouldn't fight over? And here is the disciples, the leadership, the people that Jesus was using in a powerful way. And for whatever reason, maybe they were a little bit tired. Come on, how I many know sometimes we get tired? Maybe they were tired, I don't know. But they were in a place now where they were losing focus. And for some reason, they had lost focus. And sometimes if the devil can't get you to backslide or he can't get you to stop coming to church or he can't even stop you to stop doing ministry what he can do is he could take away your focus on what you really need to be able to be effective in your life to be effective in your marriage to be effective in your in your parenthood to be effective in that business or that ministry whatever God's called you to do how many know the second best thing the devil could do is get you distracted and get you unfocused on where the power actually comes from to get your breakthrough. And that's what happened to the disciples. Unfortunately, they found themselves, and he says, what are you arguing about? He says, I asked the disciples to cast out this demon in my son. Now, picture this. This was a, a good man that brought his need to the church. Think about it that way. But when he brought his, or his need to the church, there was no power. He could have got a little discouraged because the, the, the disciples had no power. I was, I was at a, a pastor's breakfast there in Pretoria, South Africa. I, I go to those once in a while now and try my best to network there with the churches and things like that and stay connected. And, and uh, you know, they're, they're, they have guest speakers and they have these big speakers and things like that that are known in the country there. And uh, they, he, one of the pastors was speaking about how the church, you know, has lost its power or the church has lost its focus. Come on now. And he was talking about how the church has lost its power because it's lost its focus on the lost. It's lost its focus on reaching people. And I thought, and that's some good stuff. Amen. I was getting, and then he started talking about how the how we don't outreach anymore as a church in general. And he started talking about all these different things. I'm sitting in my seat and I'm going, not victory outreach. I'm in a ministry that got power. Look at your neighbor and say, you got power. 
I'm in a ministry that is filled with the Holy Ghost, that is filled with the power of the Holy Ghost. Amen. I'm filled with some radical Christians in the house. I'm able to travel all over the world, and no matter what victory outreach I go to, amen, I feel some power in that place, and guess what? I feel power right now in this place tonight. Look at Sherry and say, you're powerful. (laughs) Yeah, amen, do that. Some of you are doing it, amen. But for some reason, the disciples lost its power because they lost their focus. They lost what they were I believe they tried their best. And how many know sometimes we could try our best even? We can give our best thoughts. We can give our best intentions. We can even give our best, you know, uh, uh, you know, type of wisdom that we have. But some reason it doesn't give the breakthrough. Why? Because it's not filled with power. If you don't have power, you're going you're, you're gonna to just get tired. Come on now. You're going to start hitting. Like Paul says, I don't want to beat the air. How many don't want to beat the air? How many in 2019 want to reach your targets, want to reach your goals, want to be able to be successful, want to take your city, amen, want to win souls, amen, want to build ministry, want to do things for God this year? How many want God to move in your life this year? Then I come here to tell you, you got to have power. This is why your pastor's saying this week, we're going to have prayer all week because he understands, he has taught us, amen, as one of our elders, that it is the prayer life, that is you're going to get the power, it is in your worship, that you're going to get the power it is through the word of God that you're going to get the power and you're going to be able to walk into the victory that God wants to give your life don't get unfocused don't lose your focus don't lose your prayer life take your prayer life to the next level he said something that changed my mind changed my whole when I read this for the first time he says something that I think sometimes we don't do but it's so simple and he says Bring the boy to me. (laughs) Simple, right? But how many know sometimes we bring our problems to the wrong people? Bring our problems to Facebook. (sighs) Hello. Bring our problems to auntie, amen, that ain't got no wisdom. (laughs) She's clever and she's like 60, amen. What do you think about my relationship, amen? She's been divorced many times. We, we bring our problems to people that haven't fought the demons that you're facing. We bring our situation to the people that have not defeated the demons that we're facing. And Jesus said, I just bring the boy to me. Now, I believe in leadership. I believe in, I believe in all that. Jesus wasn't coming against the system of the church or the leadership. He wasn't saying any of that. But for some reason, they lost focus. So he says, listen, you got to come back to realizing that there's going to come times, amen, that nobody's going to be able to help you but Jesus. Woo, I don't know about you, amen, but we tried all kinds of stuff. Some of you started, you try to do all kinds of drugs to make yourself happy, amen. You try to be in relationships to make yourself happy. You try to make money to make yourself happy, amen. You try to do all these things, but none of that gave you the true happiness until you brought yourself and even brought your problems. What I dare you to do tonight is to bring your son to Jesus, to bring your daughter to Jesus, to bring your business to Jesus, to bring your ministry to Jesus tonight. And watch what he's able to do when you bring your problem to somebody that has the answer to what you are facing. Because it doesn't matter what answer it is because he has it all under control. Someone say he knows what he's doing. Someone say God can. He can. He can. The father said, well, he's been like this a long time. Since he was a child, he's been like this. I mean, sometimes we become like Tupac. It's just the way it is. Oh, you never listen to Tupac. Okay. I listen to Tupac on the way to, to get here. No, I'm joking. I didn't do that. <laughs> That's just the way it is, right? We don't even look in the fridge no more. Ain't no food in there. We don't even drive that car because there ain't no gas in there. Come on now. We start losing faith in everything and everybody because it's just the way it is. I come here to tell you, it's, it's going to change. <sighs> hey. 
Can you receive that tonight? Amen. Can you receive that whatever it is has been something for a long time? I know it's been one year. I know it's been five years. I know it's been 10 years. I know it's been 20 years. But God is able to change your situation. Why? Because it doesn't matter how long it's been. Don't get comfortable in your mess. Don't get comfortable in your trial. Don't get used to it. Yes, you may have to be patient. Yes, you may have to be strong. But don't get Give up on that prayer. Been like this since childhood. Here's my key verse, and I'm almost done. If you could do anything he asked, Jesus said, What are you talking about, man? What do you mean if I can do anything? It's not about if I can. The real question is, if you can. Because God can. Someone say, God can. It's not about if God can or can't. God can. But the real question is, do you believe he can? Do you believe he can? I've been a missionary for almost going on nine years in South Africa. I travel all over the world. It's been a a beautiful journey. Trust me, I was a broken young man, come from a broken family. Poor, come on, slept on a couch, never had my own room, come on. Totally, totally shouldn't be where I'm at today. If you have a similar testimony, then what is stopping you from believing what you're going through now? If God can do that for us, then everything else should be actually simple. Because if God can change us, amen, if God can restore us, amen, if God can give us something that we didn't deserve, come on, somebody, then God can surely do what you're facing right now. I've seen our church, amen, we were, first two years were 250, and it was powerful. Third year, fourth year came, we went down to 100 people, come on now. Tough times. God God has gave me a word in prayer and fasting, and I'm almost finished. God gave, I prayed and fasted. We're, we got to church to about 150. I worked, I worked real hard. Someone say, I worked hard. <laughs> and because I worked hard, I got it to 150. <laughs> but when I let God work, <laughs> I went and prayed and fast for three days. The third day, long story short, the Lord spoke to me and asked me, if I were to give you anything for the church, what would you want? And long story short, the Lord gave me two words, stability and health. Stability was for me. Because how many know God can't bless confusion? If you don't know what you want. He says, if you're going to be stable there in South Africa, then I'm going to give you a healthy church. I says, Lord, okay, Lord, I'll, I'll die here in South Africa if that's what you want me to do. The Lord said, I'm going to give you a healthy church. The church has grown from 100 to 200 to 300 to 400 membership right now, our, our church here in Pretoria. This year, on a Super Sunday, we rented a hall. We had 500 people, 600 people. On a Sunday morning, one Sunday, someone say one, amen. Don't, don't quote me, amen. We had one Sunday, 700 people that came to our Sunday morning service. Why? Because of nights like this. Because of nights like this, amen, that we get a hold of God and we start praying, we start believing, we start trusting, we start laying our petitions to God. I told God, I said, God, I don't know what to do anymore. I've been out here for about six, seven years, God. I don't know what to do anymore. I did my best. And God says, listen, let me do it, amen, and watch what I'm able to do. And I come here to tell you, whatever it is that you lay on the feet of Jesus tonight, he is able to carry it. He is able to turn it around. He is able to give you a breakthrough that nobody could give you. Let's all stand. Listen. I'm ending with, end with this. And this is what he told them. Listen. The, the, how many know that, that we know that the, the, that demon was, was cast out, right? God did a miracle. God did a, a supernatural miracle. But that's not the greatest. I don't believe that was the greatest thing that ever happened in this story. The greatest thing that ever happened, and this is a word for some of you tonight. 
The greatest thing that ever happened in this story isn't that this boy was delivered of demons and this father got his breakthrough and that, you know, all these, the disciples learned, were growing. Come on, now all that was happening at one time. But the greatest breakthrough, and this is a word for some of you. He said, I command you to come out. I, I command you to leave this boy. I command this situation to change. And then he said this, and never enter him again. Oh, you. How many want a never again type of breakthrough tonight? How many want God to do something for you tonight that you've been struggling with, you've been believing for, and God is able to give you a breakthrough like never before? Will you never again struggle in that area again? God is going to deliver you of something. God is going to heal you of something. God's going to give you a breakthrough of something. God's going to stir up faith inside of you again. Why? Because God did not give you a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and a sound mind. How many want that tonight? How many believe in God for something tonight? We got a few more minutes. I want you to lift up your hands. Come on, tonight is prayer. We're going we're gonna to pray a little bit longer tonight. But I want you to lift up your hands. Oh, I don't know what you're going through, but I come here to tell you that God's able to give you a breakthrough that whatever it is you're, you're praying or believing for, he's able to give you a breakthrough that you never struggle with that again. He's going to give you innovation. He's going to give you creativity. He's going to give you all that you need to be able to be successful in your ministry, in your family. How many believe that? Lift up your hands. Come on. Lift up your hands tonight. Come on. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus.